Let's look at uh, some of the things that's got us concerned today. Let's look at the physical side of this stuff and let's look at the spiritual side of it and try to find us some peace. Number one, don't watch the news. Don't, don't let this communication, 99.9% .9 of all spiritual wars fall in communication. The devil wants to damn you in your head. Because if he got your head, he got you. Amen? Leave it alone. It's trash right now. It ain't going to be news until they tell us some facts pertaining to reality. Amen. The uh, election is not over. Do not be dismayed. Do not be taken aback. Do not be depressed that Joe Biden is the president. The media does not elect and call presidents. It's not over. It don't matter what anybody says at this point. This is going to court. Okay? And it ain't going to be solved until it goes to court. We'll talk more about that on the spiritual end of this. What we do know physically is this. We do know that in 40 or more counties in Philadelphia and four or five states, all of which was the states that was the determining factors, Something that had never, ever been done, ever, according to poll people and people who does this for a living. The people who use the machines to count the votes ran an update on all those machines the day before the election. Just so happens, every one of those machines malfunctioned. And just so happens, Every one of them in unity malfunctioned in favor of Joe Biden. I don't think every machine in four states, in 40 counties in one state, I don't think every one of them can mess up in the favor of the same person. I don't think so. So we ought to be able to legally get to the bottom of something as simple as that. In Atlanta, in Georgia, where Trump was way ahead, until a city pipeline busted. The city pipeline busted while they were counting votes. And the people at the voting places in Atlanta sent everyone home. Told them they was going to stop the counting. All the Republicans left and went home and they shut the doors and started counting again. Then Republican poll watchers was not allowed to watch him count the votes. Now, brothers and sisters, this is a federal law. To deny them the other side to be able to witness the counting of the votes is a federal law. They couldn't get within 50 to 100 feet of the counters. They gave them binoculars. In Philadelphia, they took the windows where Republicans was inside the windows trying to look out to see what they was doing and was ordered to put cardboard boxes over the windows so they couldn't see out. Now, when somebody don't want you to see what they're doing, it don't take much of a psychological evaluation to tell you what's going on, does it? When somebody don't want you to see, and in fact, when somebody ain't going to let you see, and in fact, they're going to stop you from seeing what they're doing. That's about all you need to know <laughs> about what they're doing. Amen? I mean, this ain't hard, brother. Then they went to a federal judge in Georgia. And the federal judge said, you're going to have to let them be six feet away at least to watch you count the votes. So they go in now with a court order to stand six feet and watch you count the votes. They take all the machines in Atlanta and take them to the back of the building. And then the sheriff department comes down and escorts the people who had a court order out the door. And not one word said about it and not one thing done about it. I got a court order to be here and a sheriff escorts me out the door. Where is the judge? Where is the law? 
What I'm saying to you right now is this ain't over. It don't take masters and it don't take forensic and it don't take FBI to figure this out. Now, we know that Philadelphia is known for their corruption. They've been systemically ruled by Democrats for more than 60 years. It's a one-party rule, therefore it is massive corruption. Just a few years back, it was so corrupt in a senatorial election that a judge in Philadelphia simply overruled the election, took it from a Democrat senator and gave it to a Republican senator just by overruling it. Flipped the whole Senate in Republicans' favor. That's how massive the cheating was there. After the poll worker stopped working, Donald Trump was sick more, listen, was more than 600,000 votes ahead at the end of election night in Pennsylvania. More than 600,000 votes ahead of Biden. After everybody went home, it was filmed, the truck pulls in with a big old basket of found ballots. And they roll them in and they pull them out and they count them. And there's 130,000 ballots that come in after everybody was gone. When they counted the 130,000 ballots, all 130,000 of them was for Joe. That is impossible and you know it. It is federal election law that any votes that comes in past a particular hour at the night of the vote has to be segregated, set apart from all of the others. But they wasn't. Now, as to the judges and the FBI and our law, a couple of things that I think is uh, important here. One is that uh, Mr. Pompeo, the uh, Secretary of State for the United States of America, came out six weeks ago on national television and said six weeks ago, the, the 33,000 emails that Hillary Clinton burned off of her phone. Not just 33,000 that she bleach bit. They was subpoenaed, and she destroyed them. She never even faced a hearing over destroying subpoenaed evidence. Never even was called before a court, a Congress, nobody. 33,000 pieces of evidence subpoenaed, she destroyed it. In our court system, our Congress, Never even spoke a word. Now, six weeks ago, Mr. Pompeo, our Secretary of State, came on national television and said, we have now retrieved the 33,000 emails. They got them. They've got the emails. Six weeks ago, and you and me, neither one has heard another word about them. Even Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump possesses the lawful right to have anything declassified he declares is proper to declassify. If the FBI is holding information, he can declassify it right now. Why ain't he declassified six weeks ago the 33,000 emails? They have Hunter Biden, a crack addict, of whom received multiple millions of dollars from China and from Russia. They have his laptop. They have his emails. They have sworn testimonies from the people they work with that the Bidens 
was taking millions of dollars from China and millions of dollars from Russia and was passing 10% of it and 50% of it through boy Biden to the big man, his daddy. They have the emails. They have the witnesses. And come to find out, they had his laptop with all the information on it in early 2019. That means while they were still trying to crucify Donald Trump for playing with Russia, they had Biden's information on the laptop. To this day, it still is not a word of it come out. And Trump has the ability to declassify it. Why ain't he? The point for saying all that is this. I just read to you the things here. I've just shared with you the circumstantial evidence that is enough to put anybody in prison. Enough to recount. Enough to undo an election. If nothing else but the fact that somebody don't want and even under court order ain't going to let you watch what they do. And that alone tells the whole story. But I just showed you that it is true that where this matter is going to the law, this matter is going to the court. I just showed you enough right here to let you know and understand you can't really trust them neither. It ain't over. And if the law is hell, Donald Trump will win this election. If the federal law's already on the record, Pennsylvania changed the election laws, changed them just weeks before the election. They changed the election laws, of which cannot be done by law except through the legislator. They never went to the legislators. Therefore, the laws of which they changed cannot be the law. And therefore, what they did cannot be held, and the votes that come in under that law has to be done away with. You have federal law that says it. But we have learned that the law don't mean nothing. Is the election over? No, 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 no. Makes no difference how much trash you see on television and who calls who. It makes no difference. It ain't over. This is going to the court. The problem is, is can you trust the courts? Can you trust the Justice Department? And so then we end with the spiritual side. Now up to this point, nothing they have done against Donald Trump has worked. Keeping in line with spiritual truth, when you might could say, okay, God is with somebody. God said that whenever the destroying rain comes, when the destroying flood comes, those that he has sealed shall not be hurt. He said in uh, 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 Ezekiel, uh, cry and against the abomination. Before I destroy the city, send down an angel with a writer's ink horn. Seal them in their foreheads that no hurt shall come upon them. Said of the two witnesses, it's coming in the book of Revelation. That any attempt and anything that is attempted to do to them to kill them will backfire on them that try to kill them. And they will be killed in the manner of which they sought to kill the two witnesses until his testimony is finished. What God does is when he appoints and puts somebody there for a purpose, that purpose is going to be served, and it does not matter literally if the whole world is against you. He will hold the people in derision. He will confound them as Jeremiah asked, because Jeremiah knew his God. He will put them in dismay because Jeremiah knew his God. That's what God does. That's how he does. And this is one of the ways, you know, we know the signs and the symptoms, ways we know when we're seeing evil, we know how, how it differs from wickedness. Now, wicked differs from abomination. And so I can look and see what it is you're doing and immediately because of the Bible, know if what you're doing is evil. I can look and see what you're doing and know immediately by the Bible if it's wicked. I can look and see what you're doing and know immediately by the Bible if it's an abomination. So likewise, can we look and see if what's taking place in somebody's life has the marked seal of God on it. And that is that nothing you do to stop them ever works. Though the whole world be against you. Well, that is what has happened so far. 
Now, whether or not God is done with Mr. Trump, I don't know that. I can't say that. I can tell you biblically there is no question, brothers and sisters, a multimillionaire, you put 18 lawyers that hate his guts with $40 million for three and a half years, and they can't even find a tax problem on him. That joker's got to be cleaner than I am. $40 million, 18 top-ranked lawyers that hate your guts? An entire media, an entire world that wants you dead and wants you gone? And with $40 million in three and a half years, they can't find one single thing on you? There's somebody on your side. They try to impeach him. They can't. Everything they have done and everything they have said about the man has been proven wrong and come back to bite the ones that did it. If Mr. Trump's testimony is not finished, then God ain't finished with him and ain't nobody in the world going to stop what God's will is pertaining to this matter. And if it's God's will that Trump continue fixing the trash, because he's got them. He's got them on the line right now, brothers, all the way up to Hussein. You know, Obama. All the way up to him, brother. That's federal crime. That's treason. That they actually videotaped and wired their opponent in an election. They got them. If you just got a court system and a DOJ, that will do what they're supposed to do. Nonetheless, if it's God's will, and I don't mean like the vote business with all this nonsense, it's God's will who's going to be the president and who ain't. I don't have to vote. That's stupid. That is the height of stupidity. It's God's will for you to eat. But tell these ignorant imbeciles not to eat again till God feeds you. You're starved to death before God comes and puts a spoonful of food in your mouth. So nothing, that's number one, as we deal finally with the spiritual. Ain't nothing they've done worked. So that tells me if God ain't done with him, this ain't going to work neither. But you got to wait it out. The second thing is, is... Like all this stuff that we just talked about, how that it mysteriously happened, 133,000 votes comes in and they all for Biden. Water lines all of a sudden bust. They send all the Republicans home. Democrats lock the door. You know, all those things that we talked about a few minutes ago that just couldn't happen without it saying something clearly. The second point that I have here is all of a sudden, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. The whole purpose was to let her hold on so that that court could not be shifted 5-4. Weeks before the election, the Supreme Court Justice died. And before the election came to be, one of the most impressive human beings I've ever watched in my life. That woman was something else. She's a God-fearing woman. She's a strict constitutionalist. And before the election came in, Trump got her put on the court. And she's sitting there waiting for something to come across her path. And then last, Tuesday night, it counted and it counted and it counted and it counted. I'm sitting there saying this is like that war. That whenever God was fixing to change world powers... And the prince of Persia and the prince of Grecia, as God was sending down Gabriel to turn that about. But Gabriel was withstood in the heavens. And Gabriel, a messenger angel, could not and was not strong enough to break through the demonic principalities that wanted to hold on to the power base they had. He couldn't get through. He's an angel of God, but the demonic power in the heavens was so strong, he couldn't get through. 
But he ain't nothing but a male man. Hallelujah. God looked over at Michael, who is the war angel, and he said, go help him. And when Michael showed up, uh, that's what was in my mind. All Tuesday night, that's what was in my mind. This is a spiritual war. We need to fast. We need to pray. This is a spiritual war. And the count counted and counted and counted and counted and counted and counted. And all of a sudden, boom, stopped. All that night, it never moved again. All that next day, it never moved again. All that next day, it never moved again. All that next day, it never moved again. Joe Biden was sitting at 264, and Mr. Trump was sitting at 214. And so, of course, I said, what's the numbers say? And lo and behold, Biden stopped, and his equals the number 12, which is the celestial number. It is the number of the heavens and their glory and their power. The Bible says the devil is the prince of the power of the air. Trump stopped at 214. Seven. Spiritual perfection and the power of God unleashed. So if I was looking at the numbers, it stopped at 12, which is the heavens. And Trump at seven. God's perfection. So I think that if we look at this matter in a spiritual sense, we got reason to hope. This does not come down to what the media does. It does not come down to what any state did. It does not even come down to what the courts are going to do. It does not come down to what the Justice Department's going to do. Every bit of this, according to everything I see in its spiritual, says it comes down to one issue and one issue alone. And it is this. Is Donald Trump's testimony finished? Or is it not? That is strictly God's will. I did what I was supposed to do. I have cried inside against these abominations. I did what I was supposed to do. I went and cast my vote. I have done everything I'm able to do. And this now rests. Now I can say, biblically, this now rests in the hands of God, and it rests upon one thing and one thing only. Is the testimony God used for Donald Trump over or not? If his testimony is not finished, there will be four more years of President Trump. And with it, there will be four years of hell, as we told you and I told you way back. Win or lose, it's hell. The only difference is, if Trump wins, we're going through hell with someone up there for us. If Trump loses, we're going through hell with somebody up there that is against us. That's what the tug of war is all about. 